Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am happy to welcome you this afternoon session dedicated to early detection and screening of liver cancer that I will share with my colleague, Professor Moika Matici. The pathology community would like to highlight the need to better monitor people with liver disease, particularly with liver cancer, to ensure that liver cancer is diagnosed early. Professor Pierre Naon, expert on liver cancer from the Hospital Avicenne in Paris, and a distinguished ESER member, will present why early detection and patient monitoring are key in if he would like to see a change in the mortality rate related to liver uh, cancer cases in Europe. One of the earliest parts of Europe's betting cancer plan to be put into action was the commitment to updating the EU, EU Council recommendations on cancer screening. We will discuss this and other opportunities at EU Council uh, at EU and international level with three experts around the table. Dr. Barbara Kersten, head of the Unit Health Directorate, DG Research and Innovation European Commission and in charge of the EU Cancer Mission. And Dr. Parta Basu, head of a screening group on Early Detection and Prevention International Agency for Research on Cancer of the World Health Organization. And also Mr. Pietro Fiocchi, MEP of European Parliament, uh, will also uh, give uh, his opinion. Moika, over to you. Okay, so thank you, Maria, and good afternoon from my side as well. It's with great pleasure to announce that uh, as well during the second session, we gathered not only clinicians and policymakers, but patient representatives also to share their views and their worries. Indeed, to have a successful program, uh, we need, uh, if we do not take actions to address the challenges uh, to uh, early diagnosis, screening and treatment, uh, and eliminate the gaps and inequalities to access to care in Europe, we cannot achieve our goals. So Mr. Koreniak, the president of ELPA is going to present us some divisions in Europe between the West and the East. Mr. Mishkoviki will present us the efforts to overcome some uh, great challenges in the North Macedonia. And we also have here Professor Maria Reis, a liver cancer expert from the Barcelona Clinic uh, Liver Cancer Group in Spain. Spain, who prepared some good examples uh, for us on collaboration at the EU level and the Horizon project. So, Maria, over to you. Thanks. I, I give the floor to Professor Pierre Naon. He's going to talk about the importance of early detection of liver disease and patient monitoring for liver cancer. Pierre. Thank you, uh, Maria, for the nice introduction. Uh, just want to make sure that you can hear me. Uh, just give me a yes. Yes. And, uh, great. So uh, it's a very, uh, very big pleasure for me and honor to be with you today because uh, I think uh, the goal of this uh, presentation will be to highlight the strength of uh, liver cancer. Uh, surveillance and monitoring of patients with chronic liver disease, but also to highlight the, the, the caveats and limitations that we need to overcome together in the forthcoming years. And this will be uh, hopefully the basis for our discussion later on. My disclosures and the next slide. So uh, thanks to you this morning, my uh, presentation will be uh, simplified because you highlighted uh, both at the uh, um, academic level, but also uh, with the, the patient's representative, the whole uh, picture of chronic liver disease, uh, which you know will uh, take decades for patients with uh, the cause of liver injury to progress towards cirrhosis. So my uh, presentation will be mostly dedicated to the state of cirrhosis, mostly when it is compensated and asymptomatic, uh, because this is our uh, angle to uh, try to improve the early detection of liver cancer in these patients with the most severe form of chronic liver disease. 
And as you know, as it has been emphasized this morning, these patients have indeed two diseases. They have uh, the complication of cirrhosis and also liver cancer and also extra hepatic condition that explain why uh, this is a so difficult uh, cancer to treat. So uh, next slide, please. Uh, I want to uh, stress out with you uh, that um, we have seen this morning also that uh, there is a wide heterogeneity in terms of exposure to risk factors, uh, uh, lifestyles and so on uh, worldwide and even in Europe. But I just want to just uh, take the time with you to see the curve, the survival curve of patients uh, we, who have uh, liver cancer, all stages uh, um, uh, connected. And you see here the black curves of European patients with cancer, which are between those uh, from uh, the African uh, continent and Asian continent. And of course, we can understand that in high income countries uh, such as France, uh, UK, uh, Germany, and so on, we have uh, a better prognosis as compared to uh, African countries, but it is not explainable with other high income countries in Asia, such as Taiwan and Japan. And what is the difference between these very um, uh, high differences and huge differences of survival is, be is because in Taiwan and Japan, they have massive screening and surveillance program of patients with chronic liver disease. This is a whole different uh, culture uh, as compared to Europe, and we should uh, really uh, uh, take advice from these countries and uh, promote uh, liver cancer screening in Europe. So next slide, please. Uh, this is uh, basically, uh, I think, in my opinion, one of the most uh, important way to improve the prognosis of patients, because I think we are all uh, aware here and all uh, agree on this uh, different uh, situation that when you detect a small liver cancer here, depicted in the center of the liver, you, the, the patient will be eligible for curative treatment, such as, for example, here, uh, uh, ablative procedure by radiofrequency ablation. And your goal is, of course, tumor remission with a survival above five years. And this is in a strict comparison with patients with advanced liver cancer, which are uh, usually uh, detected at the same time of cirrhosis. And these patients are only elig eligible for palliative treatment with a survival below two years. And what uh, the, the main issue here is, for example, in France, we have 75% of our patients, HCC patients in this stage, advanced stage, because they were missed for the surveillance programs as compared to the other one with the small cancer. So next slide, please. So clearly one of the focus I want to make today is the problem, the issue of the uptake of surveillance. And I was very happy uh, this morning to hear a patient representative uh, saying that they are aware, so I, uh, I hope the patients also are aware of this recommendation of cirrhosis must be detected every six months using ultrasound. So this is a key uh, issue here, and this is what we should promote. And I will talk to you about this in a few minutes, promoting to general practitioners prom uh, and promoting to patients and also hepatologists and gastroenterologists who uh, sometimes miss these patients and do not include them in surveillance programs. So clearly the standard of care of, for HD surveillance is now widely adopted. So next slide, please. So the promotion of education to increase uptake of liver cancer surveillance is one of the major uh, uh, the cornerstone for uh, improving the prognosis of patients and clearly ESL have endorsed this, uh, uh, this uh, recommendation. And clearly the evidence of liver cancer is sometimes considered as low because it is not uh, uh, accessible to randomized trials. You cannot, some authors have uh, tried to uh, launch uh, randomized trials proposing patients with chronic liver disease or cirrhosis to be randomized into surveillance versus no surveillance, but the patients refuse this trial. So we will not get this uh, randomized trial as um, uh, a proof of le uh, level of evidence. But beside this, as you can see here, ESL has strongly uh, gone beyond this uh, low evidence and recommended uh, liver cancer to be performed and clearly should be endorsed by uh, all government health policy and research agencies as it had been advocated in the two, uh, 2018 uh, guideline from ESL. So next slides. Uh, I just want to 
just give you some examples of if of how strong the evidence are not on an academic ba uh, basis but on a clinical uh, field here is the difference in terms of access to curative hcc treatment and survival between here an observatory study of patients with liver cancer in more than 100 hospitals in france where you can see that only 20 percent of these patients were diagnosed during a surveillance programs leading to very low uh, rates of patient accessive to uh, HCC curative treatment and only a 30 percent one-year survival and if you compare in our country the same uh, country of France a randomized trial which compared two different modalities for screening you see here that patient had access to curative treatment uh, three times high rates and 96 percent of one-year survival so clearly from the field all physicians and of course patients who benefit from liver cancer surveillance agree that it is effective and should be promoted. Next slide, I want to highlight also the fact that the patient himself must be convinced that it is a lifelong commitment with his uh, team or his uh, medical doctor because you see here in our French cohorts of patients with chronic liver disease, mostly from viral etiology in patients with cirrhosis, there is a clear difference of, uh, of overall survival in patients who respected the six months time frame for liver cancer surveillance versus the other, and they have a double uh, overall survival because HEC is detected sooner uh, with a higher probability of curative treatment implementation. So, so again, we do not have strong evidence, but clearly from the field, from uh, uh, what we know from patients, what we know from cohorts of patients, clearly there is a marked effect of liver cancer screening. Next slide. So beyond these uh, different uh, caveats, I want to highlight uh, probably what is the most important for uh, academic teams that deal with liver cancer surveillance, which is the lack of sensitivity of ultrasound. First, we have the problem of uptake, the problem of surveillance, then we have the problem of sensitivity of our tool. And clearly, you know, as you can see here, only 45% of patients that undergo ultrasound screening will be detected with early HCC, which means that we miss almost half of patients. So we all also have to improve ourselves in this uh, field of liver cancer uh, surveillance. Next slide. So this is probably uh, one of the most important slides for this presentation that we have been advocated uh, last year in Journal of Hepatology with uh, Amit Singhal and Pietro Lambertico. How can we improve HC surveillance? And this is the ideal, I would say, uh, uh, transition for our uh, future discussion later on. Clearly, increasing surveillance uptake by promoting education of both patients and practitioners and also improving compliance of patients are key to uh, improve HCC surveillance results. And also the refinement of screening strategies by, by re-stratification of cancer and uh, implementing new uh, tools for, to improve the sensitive ultrasound weather based on contrast and hence imaging techniques such as MRI and also early diagnosis biomarkers. So next slide, in the few, next few minutes, I will just highlight how this can be done, both on the field uh, of patients and also in academic research. For example, here, if we want to promote new tools for HCC surveillance, we have to step into what we call personalized medicine, which is personalization of HCC screening. But we cannot do this for cost effectiveness issues in all patients with cirrhosis in Europe. We have to determine it who are the patients that would benefit most from a cost-effective perspective from these new techniques such as MRI or biomarkers and clearly uh, re launch randomized trials in this uh, patient's population according to HCC risk. Uh, next slide, please. I just give you one example in France of one trial which should uh, start early in 2022 and clearly which is dedicated to patients with the most, uh, uh, high, with the highest uh, liver cancer incidence of both 3%, which are estimated at 35% of the French population with cirrhosis, and in whom we will implement ultrasound plus MRI in order to detect uh, more uh, higher rates of patients with very small HCC. So next slide. So uh, beside this uh, promotion of 
academic research for uh, improving uh, early detection. Clearly, promoting patient education awareness and compliance are key, as I has already mentioned. And you can see here, this is, for example, a study uh, performed in the United States where a mailed outreach for patients with chronic liver disease and cirrhosis were undertaken to sensitize, uh, to help patients to uh, improve their knowledge and, uh, and the, the clinical pathways to get into surveillance programs. And clearly this works, but we have to understand now that it must be clearly uh, be done on a higher scale and probably at the European level would be uh, fantastic to do this, to have automatic uh, made outreach and, and recall procedures for these patients to stay into their surveillance programs. Next slide, please. So you can see that we have many fields of uh, interest to improve the cancer. I just want to uh, highlight that we also have while doing this to reduce the territorial inequity, which will be uh, uh, presented later on in this session. This is, for example, the difference uh, according to your region in France. You can recognize here the region of Paris or uh, the French Riviera, where you have a lot of, lot of doctors, um, maybe higher income. And you can see here that access to curative treatment in this uh, region of France is directly correlated to survival. And it is, of course, the same in Europe according to uh, income or whether you are living in a, a deserted uh, uh, region of your country. Next slide. So uh, in the few minutes I have left, I wanted to uh, address another issue here, which is upstream of liver cancer surveillance, which is clearly the screening of patients with chronic liver disease. And I think this is the missing point that we have in clinical practice, because we saw this morning that access to uh, the cause of liver disease vaccination, we saw just one, uh, here that uh, promotion of liver cancer screening are uh, at the uh, bottom and the end of the management of this patient. But we still struggle to find this patient, this asymptomatic patient with cirrhosis. So next slide, please. This is mainly the pro uh, what the problematic of linkage to care which is uh, trying to find this patient in the primary care setting and helping them to come to the liver clinic to get into LCC surveillance program. So uh, this is, for example, the example of NAFLD. We know that 25 to 30 percent, percent of individuals in Europe have NAFLD. Of course, we cannot tell all these uh, individuals to go to the liver clinic, but we have to uh, have tools to detect some of them who will progress towards cirrhosis than liver cancer. And this is how we will progress for, uh, to fulfill what we call the linkage to care from primary care to liver clinic. Next slide, please. And for this, now we have tools, but they are difficult to use right now. And this is why we need to uh, promote them. We have, as you know, uh, what we call the non-invasive uh, tools for liver fibrosis assessment. And you can see here that we have on the far right, all the elastography techniques you can see here that are very expensive and costly procedures that are only uh, available at liver clinics. But if you go uh, back to the primary care, you can see that you have very simple algorithms such as the FIP4 uh, uh, algorithm, which mixes age, platelet counts, and transaminase, and can be easily uh, used in primary care setting to detect patients with cirrhosis and then tell them to go see an hepatologist. So next slide, please. In my opinion, this is difficult to manage because you have to uh, promote this to uh, uh, primary care providers and also help them because it's a difficult calculation. You also have to need the help of biological laboratories to uh, provide this, uh, the result of this calculation uh, directly so the doctor can see, oh, my patient, my obese or diabetic patient may have liver fibrosis, so I have to uh, send him to the liver clinic. And this has been endorsed very recently by ESOL for the ESOL uh, guidelines for uh, liver fibrosis assessment. As you can see here, this is exactly what I told you in the setting of primary care or for example, in diabetology clinic, it's, which is identifying patient with chronic liver, risk of liver, chronic liver disease and assessing this five, five four, uh, for example, uh, algorithm, which is free and easy to use. And you can see that you can very easily uh, discard patient with a low risk of fibrosis and on the contrary perform some more uh, sophisticated tests and maybe uh, detect cirrhosis at the earliest stage possible and this patient will enter surveillance program so uh, 
final slide, please. My next slide will be my conclusion, which uh, I did as a drawing, as a cartoon, which is a call to multiple level action. And as I just showed you, I think that the primary care is probably where uh, the unmet need is the most uh, evident, where clearly identif identification of patient exposed to chronic liver disease and among them, identification of patient with cirrhosis is key to address the earliest uh, possible this patient to the liver clinic. In the liver clinic, I think that promoting liver cancer surveillance, both at the patient and practitioner level, are also very important in the forthcoming years to make sure that we increase the rate of patients included in surveillance programs. And finally, in academic centers, as I showed you, improving the results of surveillance program using uh, HCC risk stratification, uh, more sophisticated biomarkers or uh, imaging techniques are also a very uh, important in this setting. So clearly, four words for me, education, compliance, promoting clinical pathways and research are probably uh, the most uh, important words in this setting. And thank you for your attention.